On this episode of Cunningham Garage, we're going to make an external fuel filter modification. Turn it up. Hey everyone, so we're going to do these are the parts you'll need to change the fuel filter. The fuel filter on these bikes, this is a 97, very destroyed looking. 1997 Suzuki TL 1000S and this has from the factory it has a uh, internal fuel pump and fuel filter but if you need to change anything you have to remove the tank open it up and remove the whole unit so a good modification because you're going to need to change your fuel pump when it's dead so everyone knows that but you will have to change your fuel filter sometimes but it's in the tank. So you have to remove the whole tank every time you gotta change a stupid fuel filter. So to remedy that, you get these. This is the connectors that go from the fuel rail on one side, and then this, one of these. One will connect to the tank itself that hooks up to the pressure line from the tank. The other one, will go to the fuel rail and it's a, just a quick connect but it's the actual ones that'll fit on the bike i've looked it up on forums and stuff like that and then so what it is you'll need to get if you're wanting to do this so you'll need the the 5 16th to 5 16th quick connect so i'll leave it right here so you can get a good view of what it is here's the part number for the one, there's the part number for the other one. So the next thing you'll need is a bit of hose. This is fuel injection fuel line, and it is let's see, 516 ID fuel injection hose. So what you'll do is literally put that onto there on a barb fitting that's on the end of this. And then you'll have this. Here's your external fuel filter after that. And the part number, it's a Wix 33012. So essentially this is gonna be in line right here and then one on this side and then one of those on the other side, you know, hooking up everything. So I'm gonna assemble this real quick. Well, before you assemble it, you need to go ahead and remove that. I'm gonna lift it and measure out the line. I'll show you what we're gonna replace. So here we are. This is the tank lifted up. These actually have a factory like hold up bar, but I don't have one because I got this bike in a very bad condition. So with the tank lifted, this is what it looks like underneath. So here is your fuel pressure line and here is your return line. So that'll go from the high pressure, or that 90. So that'll be that 90 that goes right here, that quick connect. And that'll go down to that straight fitting that's gonna hook up to the fuel rail. So essentially what's gonna happen is, we're gonna re remove this whole piece right here, remove the fuel filter from inside the tank, and just put a line coming out, and then this, well, basically, that's essentially what we're doing. We're putting a uh, fuel filter on the outside in line. So that way, if you ever need to replace the fuel filter, you just lift your tank up and remove this. Easy peasy. So I'm gonna measure this out and build this and I'll show you what it looks like. There it is. So this is essentially what you'll end up with. So there is that 190 degree fitting it is a barb fitting it'll push into this line and it ain't going nowhere but you will focus the filter you will have to put a clamp i got some really crappy ones because clamps were a afterthought for me so i'll have to replace these another day but just for now you know this is good enough and if somebody's wondering how do you know which way to put the filter there is a flow arrow so from the 90, it'll go towards the fuel rail. So pointing that way. 
and there's a straight fitting. So where this is gonna sit is, sorry about the camera. Essentially that's where it's gonna be like that. So that'll replace that, It'll, so this'll be in the middle, that'll hook up there. Awesome. So the next part is to remove the tank and unbolt everything down here. God, it's a mess. Remove all that and that's the next step is to remove the pump and everything else. This has escalated very quickly. <laughs> so guys, this is the piece I told you I'd make. So here is the factory one. May uh you know. Yeah. So there's that 90. So there's the factory one and this is the new one I built. Looks good. It fits okay. But in taking this off, this poor motorcycle, this thing has been parked outside for about a year. It had an issue, I was assuming it was that and a couple other things. And I, I just put it on the back burner because I was going to put up the garage, which I'm done now for the most part, to where I can work on everything. So I figured I'd tear into this, get it running, clean it up to where it looks like a real bike again. Well, yeah. So this was the first part, which I thought was going to be simple. Until I removed this, the factory fuel line, and yeah, a bunch of uh, rusty looking waterish gasoline mixture came pouring out of the tank. So this is the nightmare I'm looking at. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this disgusting, I'm not even going to say it on camera. I think I got to order some more parts. So there's, okay, gloss over this for now. So that fuel filter is going to be on the outside right here, eventually. So that filter will be like right here on the outside. So inside the tank, that line goes in, into a line right here, goes up into this rubber line, and there is the internal fuel filter. It's awful looking. So what we're doing is we're going to take a piece of line, rubber line that I have extra. When you buy that fuel line to make that piece, get a long piece, probably two or three feet. That way you can make other pieces. So you'll take an extra piece and clamp it from here and just loop it into down to, down to here, bypassing and deleting this and having an external filter. But, uh, I think I got a lot more work going on now. Oh, oh, look how awful it is. Oh, that's not even gasoline. Oh, yeah. And that was somewhat of a new fuel pump. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. I may need a new tank. Here we go, guys. Look how disgusting. Look what's in here. Yeah, let me shake it a little. Oh, it looks like gravy. Oh. Oh, it's disgusting Thanksgiving gravy inside my gas tank. So, looks like I'll be ordering some parts. This sucks. So, it's another day. Everything has been disassembled like you saw before. Everything's still on the table. But the new thing is, I'm going to show you guys. You remember how rusted out this thing was? It's all cleaned up. I mean, it looked like that. It was all crudded. I'm going to show you how I did that. You notice the fuel tank's not here. There's the fuel tank. It's been sitting in this solution for about a day or two. Almost, yeah, two days. And what that solution is, is CLR. Just in case you're wondering. So what this is gonna do is actually eat the rust. And as you can see, it was like a really pretty lime green. It looked like Mountain Dew almost when he first put it in. But now look at it. It does look like this too, a little, cause I had that thing sitting in here too. 
and I just recently took it out, but I wanted to show you guys before I took this out what this process looked like. So I literally just put it in here and let me see if I can get a light on in here. Yeah, you see that where all the rust was? It's gone. I'm gonna pull it out and clean it off and wipe it down, wipe it down and show you guys. So I'm starting reassembly of the tank. As you can see, I've got the uh, knockover sensor and stuff like that hooked up. So to remedy this whole problem, let me uh, get this over here. So there's the fuel pump holder and all that good stuff. And look, the UPS goodness man brought me some, some toys. So I ordered, let's pull it out. Here is a brand new fuel pump for the TL. And it is, let me, uh, there we go. So there is, if you can actually see it, there's the part number, shaky hands. That's the pump I'm using. And it comes with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna pull this stuff out real quick. So the tank is out of its bath. So there's that bath and I just literally took it and laid it there and sprayed it out and cleaned it out with water and some other stuff. Well, you guys can't see, this thing was so much debris came out of that tank. I can't believe, look how good. You guys saw just a second ago how bad this tank looked. Now look at this. I haven't scrubbed anything. Oh, there's still some garbage down there. I gotta wash out. Yeah, I'll vacuum that out. But look how good that looks already. That's gonna get sucked out right now. But you remember, all of this was completely coated. Like, really bad. Like, you couldn't even see that little nipple before. Look at that. And that's just from sitting and CLR. All I did was submerge it in that tank and that was it. I let it sit there for two days. That's awesome. It's all assembled. You can see the, there's a new fuel pump, filter. I did zip tie the pump. It is in, it's pretty secure without the tie, but you know, security. Makes you feel better. So the factory plug fit right back into this one. I didn't have to rewire any, anything. So there was that bit of hose it came with. It was actually too long. Uh, it actually came up to like over here. So I had to trim it. So just cut it to length, whatever you need. And then remember the fuel line I said, buy extra to loop it. So here's that loop. So it goes down and hooks up to another line down there. So that fuel filter used to be right here. Now it's gonna be outside the tank. I'm gonna reassemble this thing. The gas tank is reassembled. It's on the bike. I went ahead and hooked up everything because I'm really excited to get this thing running and started. So let's walk around, I'll show you guys. So I'm not too happy with the way this is uh, that's sitting. It's actually sitting against a frame and vibration is going to end up causing me some problems. So I'm actually going to end up redoing this. I'm going to lift it and show you. Yeah, so I don't really like the way that's sitting. So I'm going to redo it. And I'm redoing my air box because it's, she's a little damaged. So yeah. But there it is. Gas tank is back on. While I was doing that, went ahead, replaced the tires, front and rear. And the tires I got are the Continental Sport Attacks. I mean, I've, I heard they're good tires. I heard they're very good tires. I got them because they were on sale, of course. But in doing that, I didn't record this. <laughs> Oh, I should have recorded it. I can show you guys. The rear tire doesn't match the front. The front's chrome rim. The rear 
is actually from a 2007 Hayabusa because the other wheel, let me show you. So that is the Hayabusa wheel. This is the original TL wheel. So the chrome was peeling on the inside, but that wasn't the problem. When I took it to the shop and the guy pulled the wheel uh, the tire off, he started laughing and told me no way I should put a new tire on this. Whoever the previous owner was, look at the pits. Whoever the previous owner was had a put fix a flat in this thing. And it was, I mean, it started eating the rim. It was so bad. And I'll put a picture up. As you can see in this picture, it is way worse than what you see now. I actually dropped the whole wheel. I got mad and dropped the whole wheel in that solution of CLR. <laughs> and this is right here. This is the result. It actually did clean it up a lot. But the rim is pitted and I didn't trust it. And I went ahead and bought a Hayabusa wheel. And the only thing that's different that I noticed is the brake disc. The Hayabusa is a little bit bigger, so all I did was unbolt the disc, remove it, and took my TL1000S disc and bolted it back on. Direct bolt on, wheel went right on, everything was great. So let's go ahead and start this thing, see if it'll run. So fuel pumps in, brand new tires, everything's on, so it better run. So I just put new tires on it, just finished up the fuel tank too. So go ahead, I've already checked everything, everything's looking good. Fuel pump kicked on. And no start. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I think I've got an issue with my start-stop switch. So, yeah. When I hit it, the fuel pump kicks in. So I think I've got a short inside that. But let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and get it running at least. Nope, there you go. That's it guys, 
bike is running great. Brought it up to full operating temperature. Uh, only issue, which you can see on the ground, I, uh, I spilt a little bit of coolant. And that's because I forgot to put the radiator cap on. So that's, that's my fault. <laughs> and I did have to jump the, the cooling fan switch. I got to change it out. I guess it's bad. It didn't kick on. So I had to just jump it real quick, turn the electric fan on. Everything's great now. So awesome. And didn't cost me that much to get it done. I mean, bought a fuel pump, fuel filter, did a few little mods and got my baby. My baby's up and running. Garage is a mess, don't worry about that. So, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. I got some insane stuff coming up. You guys are gonna laugh, you're gonna love it. I, I hope you're gonna love it. <laughs> I have fun when I do it. I've done it before and it's fun. <laughs> And I've got a couple ideas. I might sell a project that I have, I haven't worked on in a while, to do something really fun for me and for you guys. You guys are gonna think it's funny too. It's something I saw on the internet. I'll talk to you about it in the next video. The next video, the brakes on this thing, the master cylinders are shot. They're not working. I gotta rebuild them. So I got, here we go. Brake Master Cylinder Rebuild Kits. I got it for front and rear, so I'm gonna do a whole video of me just rebuilding them, see what happened to them, what went wrong. I mean, the bike has been sitting for a long time, so yeah. But hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.